Hey there, this is Alana with Jamie, and you're listening to the Praying Christian Women podcast. How's it going? It's going pretty good here. What's new over there? It's funny because it feels like it's been forever. We had been like almost every day, and we've missed since Monday. So that gap feels huge. It feels like it does feel huge forever. And you know what else I realized? I realized that like it's been over a month since you and I have had like an actual non-public conversation. That's right. All of our conversations are just are right for here. the world to see. <laughs> yeah, like we get on, we probably have like all of 10 seconds like, hey, you ready to go? And then we press record and Well, you know what that means? That means that we have not been doing our regular confession to each other. Is it- should we do this on the air? Should we? Okay, ready? Go you first. <laughs> <laughs> I'll write it down and I'll hold it up to the screen, but I'm going to write it like really, really little. That's um, right. You know, I would say if I have been struggling sin wise, you know, there's definitely been some just, you know, family tension of being cooped up, you know, and it's going way better than it could. And to be totally honest, like way better than I would have expected given the circumstances, but it's still, that doesn't mean it's, you know, perfectly easy. Um, so I have not been like a hundred percent the wife and mom that I wish I could be during this time. So we'll keep it vague, but you know, it's at least a start of a confession. Yeah, no, I'm right there with you. And I've, mm-hmm. I did publicly confess early on that I have struggled with kind of a critical spirit toward some of the stuff going on. Like even today, there was something that just made me kind of mad about um, a decision that was made regarding, I'm not even going to go into it because if I do, then it, but yeah, there was, (laughs) there was a decision that was made and I just felt myself just jumping on the criticism bandwagon because it's Mm, so easy mm -hmm. to Monday morning quarterback. You know, it's easy to say, right. right. I don't know what's gone into some of the decisions that have been made. Mm -hmm, And so mm -hmm. I just, I, it's been a, I just can't believe because I had not really thought of myself as, you know, I'm usually more of a go with the flow, not super political, not super. um, I mean, I have things that I'm definitely I won't even say passionate about, but there are issues that I'm definitely mm-hmm. like, yeah, this is right. This that is you wrong. Follow and yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. But anyway, just there, I, I've, I've had to really constantly put myself in check and be like, wow, you're feeling critical. So, and I right. think the family stuff no, as I well. I think that's pretty, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, I saw this, it was, it was terrible and we kind of read it just for amusement, but this woman got an anonymous letter on her door, basically shaming her for going out of the house. And so it was like a nosy neighbor. Mm -hmm. And she wrote like, I see you leaving the house every day. I see you taking your kid and coming back eight hours later. So I assume you're taking him to daycare. And I can't believe you're doing that during this time. And this woman like worked for the police station. Like she is not only an essential worker, but like somebody who, if she stops doing her job, that neighbor would stop being protected. And I do feel like in cases like these, it is a little easy to look at how others are handling it, if they're handling it differently than you would, and, you know, maybe they're being overly cautious, or maybe in your mind, they're not being cautious enough, or or things, and really, like, everybody needs the benefit of the doubt right now. I think we can go ahead and say like, yeah, some things are very, very foolish, you know, and we've talked about like blatant disrespect for your country or your state's laws right now. Not a great idea, but I don't know in terms of, okay, well, like for example, I've got a birthday coming up and I got a, like a fun money to spend from a relative and like, I want to go out and get some more house plants. It's not essential. It's, you know, and I haven't gone yet. I'm, if I go, I'm going to be super, super careful. There's part of me that wonders if, you know, I might choose to wait until things go over, but honestly, like there's part of me that's like, well, if I go, people are going to be like, what's she doing out of the house? And, you know, we just, we all need to... I don't want to necessarily say mind our own business because the big part of social distancing, it is for the cumulative effect of us all doing it, but there needs to be gentleness and grace. I agree. I definitely agree because there have been times, the thing that I got upset with recently was more of a news item rather than like a personal, Oh, that person's doing that. But, Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. but the, uh, 
the times when I have been kind of critical in my mind, not vocally, mm-hmm. but just kind of like, hmm, yeah. I yeah. have pretty quickly turned it back on myself and been like, but I did this thing. And I bet there are yeah. people that would have thought that that thing was not right. the right thing to do. So just, mm-hmm. yeah, like you said, let's have a lot of grace for each other and hope, I guess, give people the benefit of the doubt that everyone is trying to for sure. do what they can. You know, and then be thankful for what you've got. Like I know a lot of celebrities are getting backlash because yes, they're sheltering in place, but they're sheltering in place in these big old mansions or things like that. That still is hard. Do you know what I mean? Like you and I have it so much better than like a 12 person family living in a two bedroom sky rise apartment. That doesn't mean that it's not hard for us, you know? So I think we need to be careful about that too. Like Mm -hmm. we're each, we're each going through struggles and there's no reason to like, tell somebody else that they don't have the right to be having a hard time. Now, I think we should watch how we complain about things. I don't think it's right to just go on social media and start whining. You know, I think it's super important to think about and focus on the things that you are thankful for. Um, and that's probably a good antidote for all of the, the negativity that can come. But yeah, you know, so I guess maybe encouragements to be gracious and to kind of watch your own attitude, make sure that grumbling, complaining type stuff isn't creeping in. Yeah, no, I think so. In fact, um, so the interview that I did on Tuesday that's going to air this Monday was with Pam Fields. Of uh, She blogs at tendingfields.net. Mm-hmm. And she has a Facebook group called Less Than Perfect Christian Mamas. And mm-hmm. I joined the group because it sounded really neat. She does a lot of like mutual encouragement of, of Mm. mothers of Mm. all walks of life, the Christian mothers and kind of dealing with the changes that have happened and just a lot of encouragement. And so the other day, I think it was yesterday, she posted about grumbling and she mentioned Mm. the book Mm. by Trisha Goyer, um, the the grumble free year. Yeah. Which we've highlighted right in a mm -hmm, previous interview on. Yeah. Yeah. We interviewed Trisha. And so she, um, but she was talking about how do you handle grumbling? And the thing that came to my mind, the first thing, like, how do you handle grumbling in your kids? And I thought, unfortunately, almost every single time I have noticed grumbling in my kids or them bickering with each other, it's been a trickle down. I've had to look at myself and I've noticed Mm. that I've been grumbly and that I have Mm. Like allowed that to trickle down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just, I hear my voice echoed in the way that they speak to each other. It's almost like there's this pecking order of like the the oldest. Yeah. The oldest will nitpick the others in the same tone mm-hmm. and voice that I will nitpick all of them. And then, uh oh. And oh boy. Yeah. It is. It's, it, yeah. I have had. So, but, no, go ahead. Okay. So, speaking of hearing your voice parroted from your kids, um, my youngest, he has this iPad app where he can make these little animated videos Mm -hmm. and they're actually super cute. So he'll sometimes make like family videos so he can make people that look like all five of us and he can, yeah, he can do this little dialogue. Like he even makes little scenes based on rooms in our house. It's very, very impressive that he can do this and like that the technology exists to allow the the 10 year old to make these like five minute animated videos about our family. So (laughs) he did a core coronavirus edition and it was so adorable like it had Scott with his big old beard walking in the front door holding a briefcase and he says guess what kids there's a virus in China we're not going to be able to leave the house for a few weeks now, and then it's Scott- this is in your little boy's voice trying to mimic yes. Scott's voice I yes. love it and then, and then he comes to me and it's so cute here's my line it was something like the effect of I think it's going to be all right, guys. Let's just get a whole bunch of new board games. (laughs) It was really, really cute. I love that. Through the, through the mouths of babes the other day when, you know, most times that we go outside now, I will instruct our youngest who loves animals. Mm -hmm. Remember you can't ask to pet a dog because when the dogs right. and the I'm like mm-hmm. they you can't we got to keep our mm-hmm. distance and don't go up to the because I mean that's just what she does is immediately right. can I, can I mm-hmm. pet the dog 
And um, so I have to tell her almost every time. So when we Aww. went out, I reminded her and we were going for a walk. And she said, I know, mom, social distancing. <laughs> oh, cute. And it's like, so yeah, no, that's adorable. We have this neighbor. I would so this is just kind of a fun praise report that talking about dogs it reminded me of. So all last summer and fall, we saw an elderly man in our neighborhood. He walked with a walker, but he walked his little like beagle mix type dog every single day without fail, sometimes Aww. multiple times a day. Um, whenever we were out on walks too, like we'd stop and say hi. We know the dog's name. We you know that's about it. We don't know right. his name, but then this whole hunker down thing came through and I was even asking a few of the other neighbors I know, I'm like, do you know where this guy lives? Just so that we could check on him. Yeah. And you know, nobody knew where he lived. So it was just kind of like, man, I hope he's okay. And Scott and I were out walking a couple days ago and we saw him out. And so this, it was so cool because he was out, he was with his dog, with his walker and with another adult. Like I assume maybe like his daughter or granddaughter. Oh, so good. it just made me so happy to know like he's not alone. He's got someone presumably taking care of him. And now he's able to go back out on walks. It was really neat to see him. Um, and, you know, just those signs of spring, even, you know, like more people are getting out. Our roads were really icy until a couple of days ago. So mm -hmm. you know, it was only the really brave people going out or the people who did go out had the, what do you call like when you cross country ski, like the, the ski poles? Trekking poles. Yeah. Yeah. They would course. actually be out with yeah. those or, or things like that. So it was so fun to see that he's okay. And really just on a more general scale, just so nice to see spring coming to our neighborhoods, which is great. So yeah, we've been doing some walks lately too, which is so, so nice just to get out, get that fresh air. It is. I even have the windows open a little bit today just mm -hmm. for a little while to let some of the air in and just get, yeah. get that fresh air. Well, yeah. another, another positive thing. So I have, we have this, this couple that we were friends with in Arizona mm -hmm. and recently the wife passed away um, several months ago, I think January. And there was a ceremony of a uh, celebration of life that was, po mm -hmm. that was posted on YouTube um, that it was actually streamed live, I think at the time, and I didn't get a chance to do it. Uh, but we watched it last night. And mm. one of the stories that her husband told was so cool and so relevant to today um, regarding prayer and just hope during these times when people might be feeling discouraged. She was in the hospital and she had gotten a tracheotomy. So she had a trach mm -hmm. tube, which it's possible, he said, to speak when you have one, but it's mm -hmm. hard and you yeah. have to work your way up to it. And so he had been praying that God would her sons were going to be visiting in like another two weeks or something mm -hmm. and he's like god could you speed this up because i really want her to be able to speak to her sons when she gets mm -hmm. when they get here and he said i heard clear as day god saying right now he's like don't worry i've got it covered but right now don't even worry about it because i'm the only one she needs to be talking to right now mm -hmm. he said that was the beginning of her prayer ministry and he showed a picture of this sign that she put, or I guess it was like on the whiteboard maybe, or a sign that she mm -hmm. taped to her next to her bed. And mm -hmm. it was a sign that said, how may I pray for you? And there was a little jar. And so mm -hmm. the, the people in on her floor or whatever, wherever she was, I think she was in the hospital at the time, um, would write down prayer requests and drop them in the jar. Wow. And she, she had a prayer ministry for the, that period of time, especially when she couldn't even speak she could read mm -hmm. and she could pray. Yeah. And that was like, man, what a, and, and one of the nurses or employees that came in a, like a week later and said, both of the prayer requests, I just wanted you to know both of the prayer requests I put in that jar were answered immediately. Aww. And you know, what a great story and a great testimony that, that <clears throat> yeah. no matter where you are right now, you could be on a ventilator, you could, you know, but mm -hmm. you can pray, you know, you can pray mm -hmm. and God can use you where you are, no matter what. And the fact that God would take this huge, like the most powerful thing that we can do really is right. pray. Mm -hmm. And yet you can do it even when you're at your most vulnerable and you're at your mm -hmm. most frail. Um, 
Wow. Most, most isolated. You might be far no from kidding. People. Yeah. yeah. And not being able to talk that kind of strikes, you know, we joke about your fear of buoys and my fear of fish, but like losing my voice permanently or, you know, kind of being in one of those like comas where you're still aware of things like those for sure strike like horrible phobias for me. Just that sense of like feeling trapped and unable to communicate and mm -hmm. how cool, you know, that she went through something. And I, I know I'm not the only one who would feel that way about that, but how cool that she was able to kind of rise above that. You know, I'm, I'm sure that takes a significant degree of just spiritual and emotional stamina. Mm -hmm. And I think that's actually a good reminder, you know, who Richard Wombrand, I can never say the name quite right. The, um, the guy who found, founded the Voice of the Martyrs. Yes. Yeah. How do you say his last name? Wormbrandt, maybe. Okay, I, I don't okay. know. I always feel like it's it's like the Worcestershire, right? <laughs> Worcestershire. Like too many W's and R's right next to each other. Yes, Richie. <laughs> he had this, um, you know. So, for people who don't know him, he started the Voice of the Martyrs Ministry after being in a communist prison for quite a while, and so his ministry is and was for the persecuted church. And he talked about how people who are free now really need to learn to focus on that kind of mental stamina because he talked about, you know, staying up all night while he was in prison to pray and how he wouldn't have been able to do that if he hadn't been, we talk a lot on the show about how prayer does take practice, mm -hmm. you know, and yes, you can do it anywhere, but it does take a significant amount of energy. and. I think that's a good reminder for us right now to be practicing that power of prayer so that, it, you know, if you fall ill and end up in the hospital on that ventilator, you've had a little bit of reserves to draw back on, you know, or um, I don't know. I, I think that's such a neat story, though, of overcoming that. Yeah. Well, so one of my very first blog posts ever was kind of reflecting on my time in Kenya when I was right out of college. Mm -hmm. And I got there and um, one of the things that I was able to do is I got to go with one of the um, one of the girls there that I'd become friends with. She was a teacher, but on in her spare time, she also she was a single woman, but she either bought this plot of land or used it to farm peanuts they call them ground nuts and it was harvest time and so i was able to go with her and actually harvest the ground nuts and i went out there and i just as i was working you know i had not been i i worked in a research laboratory i did not do manual labor with my hands mm -hmm. and my hands uh, my and i was very pale and the sun was mm -hmm. very intense and i don't remember if i didn't have sunscreen or oh no i don't know but whatever the case it was they they were really afraid that i was going to be like dehydrated and sunburned and right. so i was out there and i thought oh, i i like i resented my whiteness and i resented my lack of calloused like worked hands mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the thought crossed my mind if only i could go back can't do anything about my whiteness, unfortunately. But, <laughs> Go to but, a tanning booth. <laughs> or, or bring sunscreen. I don't remember why, yeah, but right. I did get a bad sunburn. But I do remember thinking, if only I could go back and tell myself like six months before that I needed to do some manual labor to toughen mm -hmm. up my hands mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I'd be ready to be yeah. able to help her and be less fragile because they, right. they were, and, and even they were treating me like really, really like delicately. And I was, I resented yeah, that. I hated right, that. Right. So I went back and uh, so I just thinking about that, I, it, I just drew this spiritual parallel similar to what you're talking about of, mm -hmm. I don't want to get to hard times and wish that I had practiced those disciplines exactly. and toughened up my spirit with mm. exercise and, and work to get myself yeah. to a place where I'm spiritually hardy enough to weather a storm. Mm -hmm. so. No, that makes a ton of sense. It actually, I had just pulled up our just for fun questions because I forgot to pull them up earlier. Oh, yeah. Um, so let's do a spinoff of that. This isn't the one that I had next, but what if the spinoff is, let's say that like last summer, as early as last summer, you knew everything that was coming was coming. What would you do differently to kind of get you and your family ready? Wow. I don't even know. 
I don't even I think know. for me, like one of the first is even just appreciating certain things more, yeah. like the fact that like I probably would only take myself out for coffee once every six weeks, but it was always like a fun, it was like a mom date, you know, it was like just me, just my journal, um, hour and a half of quiet. I, and I appreciated it, but I think that if I knew that I wasn't going to be able to do that, I think I would appreciate it more for sure. So that's one, even just like being more aware of the things that I was thankful for. Oh, I think definitely maybe spending time because now, now that I, now that I can't physically spend time with people, I would say I, mm. I felt busy to the point where I was saying no to, well, even you and me, we tried to get together so many times. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. that's one. Right. I would get together with yeah. you guys, you know, and just yes, for sure. make, it, make happen it happen no matter what. You're because right. Because there's always yeah. this thought, well, it'll happen. We could do it next week You're or right. just kind of exactly. keep putting it off and putting it off. Same with, and I had several people where that was the case and now I can't. And the other thing is, um, mm -hmm family, you know, it's, I feel a little claustrophobic knowing that if something were to happen to a family member, to a parent or, or mm -hmm. in-law that I wouldn't be able to make you it. can't get over there. That, That's yeah. That would be, you know, so maybe thinking about that and mm -hmm. I would have probably planned a trip before, no matter what the oh. expense was, because we actually mm -hmm. had a trip planned That's right. yeah. for spring break and mm -hmm. expense wise, it didn't work out. And it turns out it probably would have been a very bad idea to travel at that time because that was when everyone was bringing mm -hmm. the virus back Yeah, from travel. Yeah. Well, you know, Scott was planning on about a month from now being at a conference in the same town where my grandparents live. Yeah. And there was a tiny bit, you know, like everything's canceled now. So it's a moot point, but I could have gotten myself a ticket for like 300 bucks, like a round trip ticket, which Whoa. I really don't know anything about ticket prices for people in the lower 48, but to get that is anywhere cheap. from Alaska. Yeah. It seemed really, really like, why would I not do this? But of course I did the hemming and hawing and what, you know, what would we do with the kids? And, you know, so even before, um, before his event got canceled, I was more leaning towards not going. Mm -hmm. And now kind of like what you were saying, it'd be like, yeah, go visit your grandparents. Come on. Right. Even just if it was it. like taking a different time, you know, taking a weekend when Scott would be home from work and just, you know, popping in, um, for sure. I think that, yeah. And, and just knowing that you can does make, make a big difference. So mm -hmm. I think that's a good exercise even for right now, because <clears throat> I'm feeling really optimistic and really hopeful. Like I'm, I'm truly feeling like things are already starting to look like they're going to get better sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. I'm already feeling like this isn't going to be as bad as it might have gotten, things like that. I'm feeling really hopeful. But I also recognize that doesn't guarantee that things are going to get better and not worse. So that's another question like, okay, so what if things get worse? What if six months from now they're way worse than they are right now? What if the internet goes down <laughs> or, you know, something? And just having that sense of appreciation for what we have now is is a good exercise also. And even if things do get better, what are we, and we've talked about this, what are we doing now that will, that, what are we not doing now that we would miss and think, why didn't mm -hmm. I do that when I had that opportunity? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Or we can totally flip that question 180. How are you going to take the lessons that you've learned and kind of apply them to going forward. You know, like, mm -hmm. so to put you on the spot, like, do you feel like your family is going to make strides to be less busy? Because I know that that's something you've talked about before. Or We had people... talked about, yeah, mm -hmm. of how that would happen. We've been talking about that and how mm -hmm. how things might look different What that might forward. look like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, cool. Well, I know we don't have all the time in the world. So do you want to do our devotion? Do you want to start with the rest of the day? Where do you want to go from here? Sure. We could do, um, we could do our, so our next day in the COVID devotional, the verse of the day is John 16, 33. And if you want, we could read more than that. Do you want to read yeah. like more? Yeah, okay. I've got I've got time. We're kind of done with what we have on the schedule for the day. So yeah, let's do it. So John 16. Yeah, let's go to John 16. And it talks about, you know, it's, it's Jesus uh, talking about 
well, the title of the section from verse 16 on is the disciples grief will turn to joy, which is, you know, kind of giving them hope. Um, so I don't know, we could start with 25, you want to start like 25 to 33? Or do you want to start sooner than that? Hmm. Okay, so how about I'll start at 25. Sounds good. Though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but will tell you plainly about my father. And that day you will ask in my name. I am not saying that I will ask the father on your behalf. No, the father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the father and entered the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the father. Then Jesus' disciple said, now you are speaking clearly and without figures of speech. Now we can see that you know all things and that you do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. In verse 31, do you now believe, Jesus replied? A time is coming and in fact has come when you will be scattered each to your own home. You will leave me all alone. Yet I am not alone for my father is with me. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble but take heart. I've overcome the world. Oh, this is perfect. You know, I love, especially the last verse in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. And, you know, Scott and I were talking, he's been coming home right around lunchtime and we'll go on walks if it's not rainy out. And it's, it's such a nice time to just talk and connect. And we were talking today, you know, just the start of the tribulation and truly like, any generation who goes through something hard is going to be asking themselves that, you know, they are. and what a great promise that, okay, so yeah, it's kind of guaranteed we're going to have some sort of trouble, but take heart, God has overcome the world. Yeah, it was interesting because one of the headlines today was uh, global leaders discuss worldwide peace truce for the year. And I was just, you know, just thinking mm -hmm. about Bible prophecy and like, oh boy, is this the... The beginning, oh, like but the one, the one world or one, what am I trying to say? The one world government. Is whatever. That what yeah. About? I mean, and obviously mm -hmm. theologically, those prophecies are very tangled and hard to, mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, who don't knows? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. But I think the important thing and the point that Jesus is making is you don't know the day or the time. Be ready now. Just be ready. Exactly. You know, and to be That's totally to honest. Do. Yeah, like I, I don't know a ton of history, but I know enough of history to know that what we're going through right now is not worse than what humans have gone through in the past. Right. You know, that's not to say, it doesn't mean that it's a sign that Jesus may be coming soon. It just is to say, yeah, people go through hard things. Mm -hmm. You know, I have developed such a deeper appreciation for all the historical fiction that I've read because mm -hmm. I find that it really does help me put things into perspective. Yeah. like that you know like i i used to think that i was reading them more for just great stories and kind of entertainment mm -hmm. but it's it's a great way to put things into perspective yeah absolutely mm -hmm. well so i will confess this chapter or whatever this day of our devotional is about the mm -hmm. economy I am not mm -hmm. an economist. I really, I, I feel very ill-equipped to pray in detail about the economy. So this mm -hmm. is one of the mm -hmm. shorter, um, one of the shorter prayers and one of the shorter little blurbs, but you know, our economy needs help. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, there, there's no, uh, there's no question, but right. no matter what, we can trust Jesus when he says that we can take heart because he has overcome the world. So no matter what, the economy throws our way. Sometimes I think we think, well, we can encourage people with our prayers. We can pray for healing. Mm -hmm. We can pray for relationships, but, but the economy's for me, it's like, wow, this is too big of a thing to pray for, but mm -hmm. yeah, this is, we, we've got to pray for the big things. So, oh, it really is. So I'm going to use a Marvel, um, analogy. Nice. So, <laughs> not going to apologize for it. So you know, at the end battle in Endgame, and there's a scene where Doctor Strange is like by his mystic powers, he's holding back this tidal wave. Oh, yeah. And I feel like that's what we can have in mind when we pray about these big things like the mm -hmm. economy. You know, I 
the economy is very complicated. People like you and me aren't going to get the intricacies of it. But I think we both recognize that this is something that is theoretically fragile. And if it collapses, that's really, really bad. You know, like this is, there's more at stake than whether or not people can retire now or in two years. You know what I mean? Like there's way, way more at stake. And I really picture this idea of our prayers being that powerful, like holding back what could be like a tsunami of catastrophic economic failure. And our prayers mm-hmm. do make a huge difference in that. They do. So cool. yeah. well, let's pray for the let's economy. Pray for the economy. <laughs> Almighty God, we praise you for your greatness. You are a mighty victor who has overcome the world. There is no force, no army, no disease, no economic crisis that is beyond your power to control and to redeem for your good purposes. We confess that too often we place our hope in financial security and economic stability. We thank you for these times that remind us that everything this world has to offer is temporary and uncertain. Thank you for being the one constant we can count on when chaos swirls around us. We acknowledge you as our rock and our fortress. Lord, we pray for the economy today. Right now, there are innumerable people out of work and businesses shut down indefinitely. The stock market has seen some of the worst days since its inception due to the COVID-19 crisis. People are uncertain about the future, feeling helpless and afraid. We pray that you would give lawmakers and leaders wisdom to know the most effective ways to bring aid to those who need it most and to minimize the impact of COVID-19 on the economy. Open doors for businesses to implement creative ways to generate revenue and still comply with safe practices to limit the spread of the virus. Protect us from a worldwide depression, and in the meantime, we ask that you would redeem the temporarily fallen economy and use it for your good purposes to bring glory to yourself and further your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I think that might be one of my favorites so far. Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> That's so cool because it was the hardest to write and the Aww. most like, oh, I don't, I don't even know if I, yeah. So that's awesome. Um, yeah. The praise point is that God is a victor. You can look at mm-hmm. 1 John 5, 4, John 16, 33, 1 Corinthians 15, 55 to 57. And the Be the Light challenge is scan the news headlines for an article about the economy. And because I, sometimes I'm just like, I don't know how to pray for the economy, but if you scan the headlines, Mm -hmm. something Mm -hmm. will pop up Pray very specifically and thoroughly through every detail of the article, including specific people involved, places, decisions being made. And if the economy is something that you do feel led to pray about, um, make this part of your daily or weekly routine. It's a very easy Mm -hmm. way to make this something that you can, you know, we can't change the economy in our own strength, but Mm -hmm. this could really not only make a huge difference and, and change the world through your prayers, but, but give you this feeling of power and, and remove sure. that feeling of helplessness for this huge issue. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I'm going to add another kind of be the light challenge. And that would be if you're one of the families who has received or is going to receive a stimulus check to, you know, do what you can to pay that forward. Mm-hmm. Our, our church has a benevolence fund where people in need can come. So maybe something like that. I know mm-hmm. like in Anchorage, I know the United Way has started a fund. You are, you know, no matter where you live, there's going to be places where you can donate, you know, a portion of that. So I would encourage you. I think that it also, mm-hmm. in addition to just being an act of obedience, it really does show God that you are trusting him to continue to provide. Because right now when things are uncertain, our tendency is to want to hoard, right? Yeah. And to want to just, and you know, there's definite, um, like we need to be wise and we need to be stewards, but we also, we don't want to hold on to things so tightly that we're just acting out of fear. And I think that being generous, even in the face of economic um, uncertainty is mm-hmm. a great way to practice that. Yeah. I mean, the widow, what was the thing? Like the the tax collector and the widow, Mm -hmm. you know, how she gave the only thing she had. And it was, I mean, there's power in, in generosity, acting in in faith, I guess, acting, acting Mm -hmm. in faith when, when times are uncertain, like I think there's just a spiritual Mm -hmm. power to that. I don't know what that means, but not that we're going to, yeah, uh, it just brings glory to God. Like, not that we're even going to, you know, I know some people kind of fall into this 
like, oh, if you tithe or if you give this, then you're going to get back tenfold and, you know, he'll fill your vats to overflowing. Well, if that's your only motive in tithing is to get the mm-hmm. check in the mail or to have right, then you prosperity. Kind of yeah. Mm-hmm. And so if there's this, you know what, even if, even if something bad happens, this is for you, Lord, this is to glorify yourself. And like, I just feel like that robs the enemy of glory. Like, I feel like you're sticking yeah. it to the enemy when we do that. You, you kind of are. You're, or at the very least, you're kind of sticking it to your anxiety. Yeah. You know, you're in this, this idea of scarcity that there's, there's not going to be enough for me. Um, I think about the loaves and the fishes, right? So the disciples had five loaves of bread, two fish. You know, I don't know how big the bread rolls were, and I don't know how big the fish were, but that doesn't seem like, an ample lunch, even for 12 disciples, you know, or maybe it was just barely enough for them. But then when that food was brought to Jesus, he multiplied it. Mm -hmm. So not only did everybody get fed, but then there were these, what was it? 12 basketfuls left over. Yeah. Um, You know, I I think that that's such a a neat picture that it's not, it's not like it's a dollar for dollar. It's not as if, okay, if I spend this $1, that means that there's one less dollar for somebody else. Like it, Maybe um, like talking to an economist, it might look a little bit like that, but God's economy is so different. Like he can create out of nothing. Mm -hmm. And I think that, yeah, generosity, especially right now is, is something to keep in mind. And again, this is personal. It's between you and God. I don't feel comfortable saying like everybody should give this percentage or this amount. Like it really is, that is between you and God, but the act of being generous is such a great antidote to feeling anxious about finances. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. Awesome. Well, I'm glad we got to connect again. I've kind of missed seeing you. Yes. This me might too. be the longest we've gone. <laughs> I think it was. I totally think it was. So, All well, right. well, we will be back soon. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe not. We'll keep you guessing. <laughs> oh, you'll never know. <laughs> Great. Well, have a good day, Jamie. Have a good day to everyone listening and we'll talk to you all soon.